And if you do really want to nerd out and geek out within the Beacon app, you have a lot of settings that you're able to change and control. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Beacon mic. I did receive this product to try out, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this microphone or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. The first link, if you're in the US, will take you to an Amazon live stream featuring this item that you can shop and click the carousel to find this item, as well as some other items you might be interested in. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks top notch. I'm really liking the presentation here. This microphone's available in black or white. Now let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up we have our product literature featuring what's in the box, four simple getting started steps, and their social information on the back if you ever need to contact them. Next we have a USB type A to USB type C adapter, our USB type C to type C mic cable, mics indicated right here on one end, PC on the other. We also have a headphone extension cable provided, very thoughtful. And lastly we have the mic itself, this looks so nice with Beacon's logo and branding on both sides there. Check this out. Here's a look at it from the backside, Beacon mic. Again, we got our headphone connection and our USB type C. And we can't forget about our beautiful RGB light right there. Now let's go ahead, let's get this set up and try it out. So we have the Beacon mic plugged in and ready to go. We have it connected to, you guessed it, the Beacon Mix Create, and we're using the Beacon app on our Windows PC. The microphone itself looks so nice. I really like the illuminated ring that we have with the light that we can configure, especially if maybe you wanna match it to your setup or maybe your own personal brand. Now let's take a quick peek at the Beacon software here. So we have the new default profile. That is what you guys are hearing right now. This is just straight out of the box, plug and play. This is how it's gonna sound. Keep in mind that'll vary depending on your situation, the acoustics of your room and how your voice sounds. I have not tweaked or modified this in any way at the moment. And I don't think it sounds bad at all. For most people, you're probably all set and ready to go. But if you do really want to nerd out and geek out within the Beacon app, you have a lot of settings that you're able to change and control. So first thing you'll notice within the app on the left hand side, we have all of our profiles. So we have two profiles for this mic, our new profile right here. We can save we can duplicate, we can delete. We can also go to our main default profile. This is how I currently have the microphone configured. You may have noticed a difference there, especially in the bass sound. You may notice that it sounds a little bit different than our new default profile right here. So it's up to you how you wanna configure everything. This is how I went ahead and set my profile right now. I'm still playing around with it, but I'm pleased with the audio results that I'm hearing. And full disclaimer, I am not an audio expert. And the good news is you don't have to be to configure this, but if you are, there's a lot of advanced tools and features that you're gonna be excited to take advantage of. So you may have noticed these icons right here. We have our mic icon and we have our Beacon Mix Create icon. Let's select the mic icon. That's gonna bring up our full menu. We have our mic chain. That's everything you're seeing right here, followed by our lighting options. And lastly, we have our device settings where we can update firmware, and we have different toggle settings we can turn on or off for the app, audio settings, and power settings. Let's go back to the mic chain settings, and let's look at the different tabs down here. First up, we have our headphone options for our mic monitor and headphones. We can adjust the levels, equalizer, amp power, depending on what sort of headphones you're using to monitor. You get the idea there. Next, we have our mic setup. So very helpful, easy to do. You have your speaking area right here and just wanna make sure everything lands right within there and you're not peaking too high or anything like that. For some of you, mine might be a little bit low still, but I'm happy with this because every once in a while I get really excited while I talk and then Typically, it goes a lot higher, as you could tell right there. And it depends, too, how far away you are from the mic, things like that. So I adjusted this a little bit up myself, the mic gain, and I'm happy with where I'm at. 
again, defer to the default settings and just slightly tweak them up or down. I'm still refining and playing with my settings at the time of this video, so just keep that in mind too. It can be in flux. Maybe you get some feedback from your editor, coworker, your stream chat, and then you just make slight tweaks. You do not have to be an audio engineer. They make this very simple, and I am not one myself, so you can see if I can do it or make it good enough, you should be able to as well. Next up, we have our noise suppression. This is pretty cool. We can turn this on or off, and we have different style options. So first up, we have Snapshot, and we're currently not using that, but we're going to switch to Adaptive, and you may notice a difference right there. I'm not sure if you did or not, but basically the Snapshot mode is we can literally record a snapshot of our environment when nobody's speaking, or maybe you want to like eliminate typing or things like that, or you got an air conditioner unit running in the background. You can record the snapshot and then just adjust the amount, and that's great if you have like a fixed environment that's consistently the same level and has the same noises and all that good stuff. If you don't, more like myself, people coming in and out of the studio, you know, the air, the heat might be running occasionally, a PC fan, whatever it may be. I like the adaptive setting here. We can tweak the amount and sensitivity as well. Again, just find your liking and preference and just make small tweaks, you know, greater or less depending on, you know, what you like and how it sounds. Also, while we're doing all of this, I want to point out there is a record option down here in the bottom right hand corner. You can record up to 10 seconds of audio to play back every time so you can really pay attention to the tweaks that you're making. Highly recommend doing that, especially if you're going to be here for a while. You might want to save your voice, but that's noise suppression. I'm not going to go into all the details about all these different settings and features. This is not that type of video. Beacon has tons of great documentation online on their YouTube channel, as well as on their website that walks through all this stuff in greater detail. Next, we're going to look at the expander. This is like your noise gate, but I feel like we have more options here to work with, and it's not as drastic or harsh. Basically, it kind of dies down after the threshold versus just basically chopping and shutting everything down. So I really like the expander that they have here. Don't worry if you are an audio snob and engineer. There's the advanced tab for you, just like an OBS. If you've managed some of your audio through there, they have the ratio attack and release for you to configure. Here's our little simple settings, 35%. I'm very happy with that. I believe that was the default setting. Good enough for me. I did move the threshold up from 70 to 60, but again, just find your floor, so to speak and drag and drop as needed. Start with what they have and then just work your way up or down. Next, we have our compressor. So we also have, again, simple and advanced, and you can adjust the amount right here, how much you want to compress your voice. We have our set to 33. Let's see what the typical is. I believe we didn't change that either. So that is going to be minus 20 for us, simple at 33%. But if you want to adjust that, you can do that as well. I was happy with that. Now, what we did do with their compressor settings is our attenuation down here, right around, you know, three to five, but I'd say probably averages a little bit less, but we did some makeup gain here. I pulled that up to try to match that difference for the most part, and I'm happy with how everything sounds. But again, have some fun, play around with the settings, adjust the ratio. Four seems to be average and typical, but again, there's no finite science and solution for your voice and your environment. Play with the attack, the release, all of that good stuff. So there it is, guys, for the compressor. And don't forget about your makeup gain. I'd highly recommend if you're going to use the compressor to take advantage of that as well. And that's really a super quick look at all of those tabs. But let's spend a minute up at the top here with our advanced EQ settings. So there's a couple different things we can do here. This is going to be your simple mode, but we have that toggle again. If you want the advanced EQ, we can turn the guide on as well too. Super helpful for somebody like myself that doesn't know all these frequencies yet. And where, you know, I want stuff to sound either like more broadcast, get rid of some nasal, you get it, like adjust the low mids, all that good stuff. So this is really useful. Highly recommend taking a look at that. I currently am just using it in the simple regular standard mode where we have three adjustments that we can make. And this is what I landed on for myself and just wanted to show you what we were doing. So we have our de-esser right here that we can make adjustments. We have our bass enhanced. There's basically four different options. And you just look at this curve up here 
and it gets thicker, it gets longer, shorter. So watch what happens. And maybe you can hear some of the sound difference too. I thought two was probably one of the better sounding ones for me, but look at the range here. Verse two, you see the, you see the difference longer, thinner. We got a shorter, thicker option. Then you'll may notice we kind of go around the bell curve, have you in more coverage with three and then four is going to be a little bit thinner right than three, but not too much difference, right? Three's, three's chunky, four, not so much. I landed on two. You can adjust and enhance that right there. If you have any questions, they have these helpful question marks too, walking you through all the features and settings, and they can even take you directly to a YouTube video, right? So they have you covered. And then our exciter, I went ahead, I bumped that up a little bit after adjusting our bass and de -esser kept it at the same default frequency. If you want to change basically your clarity, you can do that right here. So less is more for the exciter. Keep that in mind. So really nice. Also, I didn't mention these are drag and drop. So that's how I adjusted that right there and pulled this one down in the middle a little bit. And then I wanted to add more bass. So I was happy with adding some more bass. Maybe for some people it's too much bass but I really liked it on my playback devices here in the studio. I thought it sounded really nice to have a fuller bass in my voice that I don't normally or naturally have. And I felt like that just made um, a, a pretty big difference in the quality of the audio that we're picking up and recording in this system versus the Go XLR and our Rode NTG2. Some of that is because I'm closer in proximity to the shotgun mic, but some of that is also the custom controls that we have within the Beacon app that enable us to get really nice sounding audio. Now I got the studio lights turned off. I wanted to go over some of the microphone light settings right here. So first up, we have our solid color style. We have our brightness set to 100%, and let's just click through the different colors. They all look really nice. They're great colors. Again, you can adjust it. That's max, that's minimum. Let's do just one. Very faint. And then back up to 100. Next, we have our gradient. Choose your colors, adjust the speed and direction. Which way do you want it to go? Plus or minus. Here we go. So there's speed 10. Let's do a red to blue. Here's speed and minus 10 for direction. Somewhere in the middle. I think zero is nice. I think that's a good amount of transition. We have our reactive meter so we can have the whole ring light up and react. Again, change your colors, bar meter up, there you go, bar meter down, up or down, choose the one you want, or have the whole thing lit up. I like the whole one the best. Just sensitivity, ring brightness, meter source, your microphone or the headphones. Then we got sparkle, we can sparkle random or sparkle meter, sparkle meter, there we go, come on sparkle meter, and sparkle random. Choose your colors, adjust the sensitivity. Speed and direction, you get the idea. Customizable, really nice. The light's great to have on here. Spectrum cycle. So we're gonna go through the color spectrum here. For you RGB rainbow lovers out there. Somewhere in between. I really like the spectrum cycle. And then we have a solid cycle. Speed and direction. Going through the spectrum. That's cool. And then we also have, for the behavior, you may notice we have our solid choice. Primary, secondary. Speed of which they change. So choose the one you want. That's your lighting styles. And then we have some additional options down here. When muted, do nothing. 
turn LED ring to a solid color, turn off LED ring. So that's nice. I will have it so it'll change to red when it's muted. And when USB is suspended, turn off LED ring. Do nothing or change the brightness to a certain level. So it's great that we have those features there. I like this muted option. I'll know now if I ever see red, that that's what we're working with right there. Just have a nice visual indicator on the microphone. So now let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the Beacon mic. I'd argue for a lot of content creators like myself that aren't audio engineers, this microphone will be good enough to give you that professional audio that you're looking for without causing you to spend hours and hours and hours becoming an audio engineer. The defaults are good enough for you just to tweak a little bit here and there to get even better sound for your voice and your environment. But the good news is if you are an audio engineer, there's a lot of settings that you're really going to appreciate to be able to have that fine tune control to make sure that you're happy with the quality of audio that the microphone's picking up again for your voice, your environment, and your skill set. There's a science and an art to all this. I haven't figured either of them out. But if you are an audio engineer, you've probably figured both of them out. And for most people, you'll be able to dabble with the settings to be comfortable with the audio that you're producing with this microphone. I also want to add, it's definitely a no-brainer if you're picking up the Beacon Mix Create or just the regular Beacon Mix to pair it with this lovely microphone. In regards to the hardware and build quality, really happy with the mount, very easy to use and configure. And I really like the built-in light if you can't tell already. So cool to be able to have that. I'm looking forward to the future. Beacon continues to update the software. So I expect this product to be one of those few products that actually continues to improve in the future versus decline or become outdated or be neglected through any sort of software updates. So really promising stuff currently as well as what's to come. The beauty is just spend some time with this microphone, dialing in your settings for your voice, and you'll be really happy with the outcome.